guys, hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to the channel. So today we're staying on the topic of the topic of weight reduction. This one we are going to be removing a bit more weight. Some of you may call it extreme, some of you may call it unnecessary, but today we are removing the spare wheel well. The main reason I'm doing this is because I want to remove as much weight from the car as possible. Um, and I know I can replace that large piece of steel with something much, much lighter. The main reason I want to get rid of it is because obviously weight reduction, but secondly, it would give you so much more space for stuff in the back. So if you can see that, there's as soon as that was gone, that would probably give me probably about six or seven inches for exhaust piping or a diffuser, which may be coming soon, not saying anything. Originally, the plan was to use um, a sheet of polycarbonate or Lexan because my friend Elliot um, sent me photos of a Honda Civic and he had the rear of he cut out, had a piece of Lexan there and he had a spare wheel well cut out and had a piece of Lexan there and it, 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 it looks good, I'm not gonna lie, it is sort of rise to the next level but it looks sick. So I had this line ground, so this is a sheet of old, what do I call it, like um, shed, shed window, which unfortunately is probably about three to four inches too small and we've got a big chunk missing out there so I'm not actually going to be using that today which is unfortunate but I'm only going to be riveting in so if I want to change in the future then I can just put some ink house in but on a level of a budget we are going to be using this and for you who don't know what this is this is a sheet of two mil aluminium which I actually skimmed off a what was it? A fridge freezer which we were getting rid of at work, so nice bit of aluminium. It's really nice. Flex it, it probably does need a bit of a clean up. But it's just so I can get the holes out and get something in there and I can still drive it, that'll do perfectly. So my end goal is to, obviously it won't be this video, but uh, once this is cut out and that's in, I would like to either go lava lex and polycarbonate or I would like to do some probably like aluminium comp composite, just something really light because aluminium composite's sheets of probably about one to two mil aluminium with nylon in the middle, so it's really durable. So yeah. So the next plan is I'm literally just gonna go to the car. I'm gonna tell you parts of the car which you need to uh, worry about, such as the fuel lines. And yeah, you just send it, get the cutting disc on, cut out we need to, just fill the gaps in with a bit of aluminium, send it. Three days later. All right then guys, so we're still at the units. Beard has grown a little bit longer, so yeah, we've not been kicked out just as yet. It does look a little bit bare, which does make me feel quite sad. But anyway, hopefully we'll have some good news by the end of this week. But anyway, we're gonna crack on. So here we have the spare wheel well. So my recommendation is gonna be uh, measure twice, cut once. The main reason I'm saying this is because if you look from here all the way across, it goes in here and then back out. So you wanna make sure that you can seal it properly because if not, you will get a soggy bottom when you're driving. And then my second part of the voice is there are fuel lines from here to here. So self-explanatory, if you go through a fuel line with a abrasive disc, which is causing a lot of spark, it's not going to be fun. And for the material for covering the gap, we have this three mil ABS plastic. I am currently in contact with a company who's saying they will supply Lexan to fit this which I think would look sick because you can never moan about reverse parking again because you can just see everything. There we go. So you have like an idea of what it's going to look like when it's all sorted out. There is a, um, a what you call it, a protective sheet over this. So once that's up, it should look nice and shiny and clean. So it should be a quick, easy little modification, hopefully lose quite a bit of weight. As I can say, this whole sheet of ABS plastic probably weighs about three kilograms. Probably only gonna be using about half of it. So obviously the metal in there that's replacing it now is going to be quite heavy. So it should make quite a bit of difference. So let's do this. So that's the first pass, that's the outside all cut. I still need to do the inside and also these parts here, they're double skinned. Well, this part isn't this part and this part are double skinned. So I am gonna go underneath with the flap disc and then just grind those welds off as I don't have um, 
a spot welder remover, so I'm just going to grind them off till it comes to come off. Let me try and show you what that looks like. So if you can see those, you could probably pry them off. I might know they are quite rusty, so yeah, I think I might go remove a screwdriver first. Hopefully, just pry it off, and then if that doesn't pry off, to get the flap disc on it. And those were the lines I'm on about that you really, really want to avoid. But other than that hiccup right there, this is pretty much gone quite smooth. Um, so yeah, a bit of a relief that the double skin hopefully, well, does remove your disc quite a lot away from the fuel lines. So yeah, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put the camera down, go from the bottom side, like I said, use a screwdriver, try and pull these spot welds off, and then hopefully that should let this drop down other than this part. But yeah, nice easy, that's only took me so about 10 minutes. If it got, took me 15 minutes, I probably wouldn't have done that. But yeah, weight reduction, boys. Okay, then another 10 minutes later. So I found the easiest way to get the spot welds out was putting a screwdriver in the gap, a flathead, and then getting a big hammer and just whacking it out and then prying it, and prying it out, which has worked fine. So um, now that I've done all of this, you can see that it is almost ready to come out. The only thing that's holding it in is this part here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna go from a straight line from here all the way around to here and then should just fall out. So let's do this. So today we are doing two forms of weight reduction. I'm stop being a fat bastard and we've got a bit more metal out of the car. There you go. Look at that. So that is heavy. So there we are, the wheel well is out. That is a substantial amount of weight. Um, I will put all of the measurements in of how much everything weighs in both reduction. I don't really have scales with me at the moment. But there we go. I think that's in need of a thumb now. I think I can probably go sit inside there. Okay, so now the next step is gonna go clean it up with all the flap disc, make sure everything's nice. Probably put a, uh, probably put a bit of primer on so that we don't get any rust. But yeah, like that right there, that's the rear bash bar. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, what I'm gonna do now is put the cardboard on, draw a template, transfer that to the plastic, and we'll get that all stuck in. So I've got this down to the width that I need it. I've also just added front, left, oh crap. <laughs> front, left, right, and then back. So that way I know when I put it in and I recut it, I still know which way is the front and which way is the back. Okay then guys, so I started with this template, I got it um, to a good size and then I started cutting off bits smaller and smaller and smaller just until I was left with that there and then I transferred that to the piece of ABS plastic which has left me with this and guys I'm telling you this probably doesn't even weigh a kilogram, it's absolutely ridiculous but anyway I'm going to put this on here now and then you can see it covers the gap perfectly got like a nice, wait let me move that over a bit Got a nice running edge up across here and it doesn't um, go off too much so I'm not using excess material, which means 
reduced weight. But yeah, it looks pretty good. But it's, it's stupidly light, like it is. This, I, I, I dread to say that this even weighs a kilogram. But yeah, so what I'm gonna do now is, I need to figure out whether I want to use rivets or self-tapping, self-tappers. I do want to use rivets, but logically, this will be coming out soon to re be replaced with Lexan. So it would be unnecessary because obviously you have to drill the rivets back out. But they look so cool. Uh, let me think about it and we'll sort it out. And on three, two, one. And there we go then guys. So that is everything all nice and secure now. I ended up going with the rivets. Um, I forgot the, pit, the bit that you put into, into the drill bit so you can use screws. So it is a massive shame. So we did have to go with rivets. But um, everything's in nice and strong. I've also gone with a bit of seam, seam sealer all the way down the edges, just obviously so we can do its job, which is sealing the seam. But yeah, it's sturdy enough. Um, obviously I wouldn't want to go put an engine block on there or anything at the moment because yeah, it would probably fall straight through. And if you look down at the bottom, look at that clearance. That is ridiculous. Oh, that's probably like, when I go to like the drift events, that's like what type of clearance you see on those cars. But obviously the good part about having all of this gun is it gives us a lot more room for activities. Look, look at that. That is, that is a lot of space. So I got the option of removing the exhaust silencer and putting it at an angle. Also, I've got the chance now to bring it all the way up so it's not sloping all the way down because it does look a little bit silly um, if, I'm not, if I'm honest. But yeah, the main reason I wanted to do this is because I do want to make a rather large rear diffuser, which I think, now that that has gone, I'm gonna be able to do it. So guys, if it helped you in any way, shape or form, please feel free to like, share and subscribe. If you do these stuff to your own cars, always just send me a photo of it or tag me in it, because I'd really be interested in seeing if my videos actually help you out, which you guys have showed me in the past, which it does make my day, believe it or not. But if it helped you in any way, shape or form, please feel free to like, share and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.